Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to our first of two Superman trading card unboxings. These are really cool. These are from the 90s when Superman died, obviously. I have one box here called Doomsday, the Death of Superman, which has some really cool trading cards in there with some bonus Spectra and foil stamp cards randomly packaged, as it says on the box. But these were really cool. These, like I said, came out right when Superman died. Everyone was going crazy trying to find the different copies of the comic. There was different editions of it. Um, there was, you know, the newsstand edition, the non-newsstand, and people were really going all out because they were like, this is it. Superman's dying. And uh, they weren't aware of comic book gimmicks. And to be fair, comic book gimmicks weren't a regular thing like they are nowadays back then. So this was a major event. But within like six months or so or eight months, I can't remember, but it was pretty quickly after we start getting word that maybe Superman might come back. But he did in a way that we weren't expecting at first. So this box is what we're going to open in the next video. And this is the return of Superman trading cards, because when Superman came back, there was four individuals claiming to be Superman or versions of him and, uh, and capturing some of his best qualities and trying to save people. But it turned out there was some twists in that storyline. So I'm sure you've read it. Hopefully you have, because we're going to talk about spoilers as today we unbox the Doomsday card. So without further ado, let's get this box open and check out these awesome cards. But yeah, these packs are really awesome. Check these out. They got the Death of Superman bloody S on them, which is um, just really heartbreaking image, but also very evocative, very, you know, captures your attention for sure. And each one of these packs, I don't know how well they're going to open because, like I said, this box is from the 90s. And how people kept these sealed for all these years, I'll never know. <laughs> and then to sell them now is uh, is really cool that they're doing that. And I got these at a really great price. I bought these two boxes at Steel City uh, Collectibles, and I'll put a link to them down below. I bought these a while ago, and we were trying to sell them, but uh, we didn't get any bites on it. So I said, well, that's cool because I, I kind of wanted to keep them anyway and do my own unboxing video. So Skybox is the company who made these. And obviously DC helped distribute and put them out. So we have here our first pack. And I don't want to waste any more time. I don't remember all the types of special cards. Wow, that actually opened fairly easy. <laughs> uh, but we're going to see, you know, through here what we're going to get. And all these images come from the, I think, five, six part Superman Death of Storyline, which ran through all the Superman books, Adventures of Superman, you know, Action Comics, Superman and Man of Steel. And, uh, and those, uh, so all these images are going to come from that. So, yeah, just very cool. The fight, there's probably going to see a lot of Dan Jurgens artwork in here. Uh, the final round, that's awesome. Dude, and this was, uh, that's John Bogdanovi. I, I'm mispronouncing his name from Man of Steel, I think was the artist on. Uh, he was the artist from Man of Steel. And, uh, yeah, really cool. Great images. The backs of the cards tell you a little bit more of the story. They have the number on the top there. So I'll just show one of those off to give you an example. But, yeah, look at this. And then this is when... He tried to bring Doomsday to outer space, <laughs> which I think they replicated this kind of in the, the Zack Snyder Batman vs. Superman movie, where he tries to bring him to space and it just doesn't work. Doomsday brings him right back down. Um, and I think that also in the Lois and uh, Superman and Lois show, though, I think he was successful in bringing Doomsday into outer space at the end of the last season. So, um, so yeah, different versions, right? But I think in the comics, he tried to get him out and they ended up coming right back to Earth, right in Metropolis anyway. Uh, but yeah, a lot of great images. Like, you know, Superman with his costume torn apart and a black eye and bruises like you just don't see that very often especially around this time nowadays it's kind of a, a trope where you see him get his butt kicked a lot but um but back then you didn't see him lose a lot of times uh so or die you know like he's died in comics before but like like so brutally like this um but yeah hey look booster gold very cool shot of him a lot of people are thinking chris pratt is going to play him in the dc universe in the new movies but well we'll see and there's lois and jimmy they did a lot of cool stuff with this, you know, these characters, the side characters, especially after Superman died, they did a book called um, Funeral for a Friend. And it was like a nine part story that ran through all the Superman books that kind of showed people dealing with the grief. And I thought that was really powerful. I mean, that ended up when in my rereads, I ended up really appreciating that run a lot more than I did when the books first came out, I'm sure, because I was a kid back then. So I probably just was like, oh, my God, he's dead. And look at the fighting. But uh, as an adult, though, I will say when I was going through the comics, I really did like Funeral for a Friend. I was like to hear and see everyone dealing with the loss of their son in the, the case of the Kents and Lois, the love of her life. Like it was just, you know, really, really moving stuff. Supergirl, you know, how what, how she was dealing with it, how the Justice League, how Batman was dealing with the loss of Superman. A uh, lot of really good stuff. People feeling like they didn't do enough. They could have done more. Uh, really 
really emotional and I dug it. And hey, look, we got our first hit here. So let me go through these last cards and we'll we'll peel off this hit. Boom. And headbutt. Oh, I'm, I've, I've revealed it. Dang. Another booster gold. Is that two in one pack? No, that was in the other pack. Air rescue. And then let's check it out. We got a chrome card of, oh, a memorial tribute. Look at that. Wow. That is a really pretty and sad card. Uh, S4. All right, so we're going to put that aside. I'll, I didn't put any, like, top loaders out here or anything like that, but we'll we'll get some here uh, by the end of the video. I'll go get some. Oh, I see a puzzle piece. That's cool. Um, some of these cards do have puzzle pieces to them. So we got a shot there of Doomsday knocking this truck over. Early on, when he's still in the green suit. His arm is tied behind his back still. I wonder if they're going to show the moment with the bird. That's I don't know why that sticks in my head so much, but it does, along with this image iconic right there and then when she drops him and he, he falls flat to the ground um and she starts crying like yeah last words so i think a 90 card set was how many were in this pack and there's where doomsday first meets your man and he just punches him like all right everything else i've crushed and killed so easily i shouldn't be able to you know have to use too much force to hurt this guy and it doesn't hurt superman so he's like oh okay <laughs> so now i have to up my game and, and he does and he evolves as the battle goes on he evolves these bones come out and they can cut Superman, so yeah, really intense. You know, bombs being dropped, <laughs> explosions. Guy Gardner, oh no, getting his head crushed. He lives though. Um, and then yeah, here's a funeral for a friend. So these ones, I think these are both, yeah, these are both funeral for a friend. So these cards have puzzle pieces on the back. So you can actually build the cover to one of the first, and sorry, my hands are shaking. I, I have that problem sometimes. Um, I'll put those aside, but we'll try to see if we can put together that puzzle at the end. But that recreates one of the uh, poster images and I think the cover, one of the covers, to Funeral for a Friend. Because like I said, it was nine parts, but I believe that was one of the most iconic covers was everyone, all the heroes standing around Superman's grave as they're, you know some of the heroes are carrying him. Uh, just, again, really powerful stuff. And, and I know I've talked about this before when we discussed the Death of Superman comic book which is also the animated movie, which they did a great job at that too, uh, interpreting it. And the, the the Return of Superman, I also thought that two-part movie was fantastic. Um, but uh, Superman, there's a countdown. So if you actually pick up the first issue, you'll notice that every page has like five or six panels on it. And then you get issue two and it's down to, you know, five for four panels and then issue three and so forth. Till when you get to issue 75 where Superman dies, every page is a big splash page. And, uh, and that was something that was so subtle that I didn't notice the first time I flipped through the book post aneurysm, but then someone mentioned it to me. I was like, holy cow, let me go look. And I, I went and looked, I was like, wow, that's, that's is what's happening. That's, uh, that's awesome. Like that they did that countdown, like a subtle thing to his death. So then when you get issue 75, every moment, it's just, every punch is a big splash page just so, and by Dan Jurgens, And it's, it's just really iconic looking. So we got two more puzzle pieces here to fill the top row. But that's where Jonathan Kent had his heart attack. In the comic books, yeah, they were still alive when Superman died. And then Jonathan Kent had a heart attack. And then there's this great issue where Superman actually goes to some kind of afterlife, whether it's heaven or not. And he finds his father's, you know, um, soul, I guess. And they rescue each other. It's, it's It sounds cheesy, but it's, it was done really, really well, I thought. Um but then, yeah, this moment here where Superman's like, you know, the grip in hands like wrestlers and he's breaking his, you know, fingers, uh, breaking Doomsday's fingers. So, yeah, just amazing stuff like this. This comic book is, I think to me, the maybe it's because it was one of the first that did it this way. But it's the it's the best death and return of a character in comics. I mean, I don't know. I did. I did kind of like how Hal Jordan died, though, with, uh you know, Oliver Queen being his best friend, shooting him with an arrow like. Uh, when he, you know, took away the parallax power or whatever and became human for a moment during zero hour, I think it was. And then when he came back as Spectre and then he came back as Hal Jordan, like that was all good too. Um, but that was many writers over the course of like a decade. And this was planned from the jump. And I think they executed it really, really well, uh, in my opinion. I also kind of like the Brubaker Captain America death and return because he kind of didn't die. It was like Batman. He got lost in time a little bit, but... Still, yeah, cool stuff. Comic books, right? <laughs> What's your favorite death and return in comics besides Superman? I mean, unless you don't think it's a good one, you know, if you disagree with me, let me know down below. I'd love to hear it. 
So since we already have this puzzle piece, I'm not going to, I'll just put that with the regular cards. All right, so let's try to gain some speed here if we can and just show some of these. Um, Doomsday. That is a shot I remember. That's from the last issue where Lois is there and he's just eye beaming, <laughs> you know, Doomsday right into the wall. Uh, really, really good. He's on the road there. Interesting angle. I don't know if that's, yeah, you know, I'm sure if Dan Jurgens had it to redo, he would have done it a little differently because that seems a little off, you know, um, like the way Lois's angle is, but I don't care. It's still an iconic shot. And Dan Jurgens is an, a, a master at his art. So, you know, so that's just my dumb comment to, you know, pay no attention to it. Um, but here's Booster and uh, Fire and Ice and a lot of the characters that, you know, from Justice League that got their butt kicked by Doomsday. And uh, luckily Superman showed up to help them and direct all of the, you know, attacks towards him. And, uh, and there's, Ty there's a, what's her name, Titanus? Or, uh, let me see, it might say on the back. She's a Maxima, sorry, Maxima. She's a great character from the Justice League era around this time. She's like an alien from space who, like, wants to mate with Superman because of his power, because he, like, they're equal strengths almost. And so she comes and shows up and fights him first, and then after he wins, she's like, oh, I like this. You're you're a man who can actually beat me in a fight because in her planet, like, you know, she comes from a race that the women dominate. And so he's like, uh, so she's like, all right, I want to I want to marry you now. And he's like, yeah, I'm not getting married to you. I'm in love with someone else. You know, so I, I always like that dynamic, though. Maxima is a she's a neat character. Um, and uh, yeah, so cool, cool, fun, goofy, you know, maybe on some level male fantasy <laughs> on some level, just like a, a, a super powered woman showing up from outer space being like, I want the strongest man on this planet and I want to marry them and, uh, you know, kind of goofy, um, seventies and, you know, style of writing, but I don't know. She's a neat character though. I still think beyond that basic premise of her, there's, there's more to her, I think. Um, rest in peace. That's card 90. So I think that's the last card in the set, unless there's checklists, which I don't know. Checklists aren't a thing anymore, but I think they still were back in this day. So we might see some more. But yeah, more of the fighting. I mean, it's just brutal. And you can almost get, I think we can, yeah, that's card 76, Last Kiss. Again, from the issue with all the splash pages, which is issue 75, I think, of Superman. It's like 36 or something packs in this box. Like, there's a lot. <laughs> it's 30-something for sure. And uh, so I think you can pretty much get a whole regular base set in a box for the most part. I just don't think you can get all the, you know, the inserts, the rare cards. And look, we've gone through how many packs and we've only gotten... You know, one chrome card so far. That's another iconic shot. He's got the knot on his head and the scratches on his face. Like, just good stuff. Freedom. That's when he first breaks out. It's cool, too, because the books leading up to, you know, Doomsday arriving, every issue at the... They did post-credit scenes, kind of like how the Marvel movies do. And the last page of all these Superman books for, like, a month and a half was a fist punching a wall until it broke through. And then it was like, Doomsday is here. And then you're like, what's Doomsday? And then the next issue showed him in that green costume. And he like grabs a bird and crushes it. And then he sees a deer and breaks its neck. And you're like, oh my God, like this thing is just, just pure brutal. It didn't have to say a word and you knew that it was, it was bad news. Um, Funeral for a friend. So we got another puzzle piece here and another one here from these two covers. And again, these are the covers to the Funeral for a friend issues. And then they all form to make that big poster cover. So yeah, we're, it looks like we might even get a full set of those in one box. So here's the Justice League when they were mounting up to fight Doomsday. I think at this point, I don't know if Wonder Woman and Batman were, you know, they weren't full-time members, I don't think. Uh, but Superman was. He had just come back from outer space. He was in exile after he had killed Zod. Uh, so, yeah, let those discussions <laughs> commence. Um, and then that's where he catches uh, Perry White right there, where Perry White, I think it was Perry White that got thrown. Someone did. And Superman catches them. I feel like that would have broken your chest <laughs> being caught and stopped by Superman but I think he adjusts his strength you know like when he catches people um to avoid doing that <laughs> and again this is Superman at his peak like this is peak strong Superman that knows how to use all of his powers and has grown and has changed and you know gone through exile and took a life and knows what the meaning of life is now so that's the type of Superman that's fighting this doomsday here and, uh, and he's doing his best, you know, um, to not kill it and not kill Doomsday, but he realizes he has no choice by the end. It's like another Zod situation, his least favorite situation to be in. 
Um, so yeah, really cool. But a lot of duplicate cards in that one. So yeah, we'll try to pick up speed. We'll just try to look for some inserts now because now I've talked enough about the series. I think I've kind of given you my feelings on it. So I'd love to hear yours down below. And right now we'll just kind of go through. That's a cover from the Just League comic that ties in. That's a good one. Yeah, and then there's when you start seeing Doomsday's face. Oh, that's awesome. It's another Just League cover, I think. Or maybe it was one of the Superman covers. But yeah, there's Blood Bloodwind. Is, uh, he's the guy. He's this guy here. He's really cool. They've been bringing him back in recent comics. In action comics, I think, as a backup story. He's like a vampire Superman from hell or something. Like, he's, he's cool. I, I think he's a cool character. Um, so it's cool that they're, they're starting to do more with that character again, because I felt like there was a lot they could have mined for material and story with that guy, and they, and they kind of just gave up on him in, in the 90s, and it's cool to see him kind of come back, so. All right, real quick, just flying through these. So yeah, there's a big super weapon, which didn't work either, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was, that's, I think, one of the, the things that builds tension the best in this series the death of superman is the fact that they try a lot of things before superman arrives and then superman arrives and he gets kind of taken out temporarily and then those other forces have to come in and do something and then superman comes back you know at toward towards uh, the middle and end to fight doomsday in a brutal way and uh yeah it's just really well done but it just shows you like how desperate humanity gets when they they're like okay superman's down we got to do something and then the just league how desperate they get okay we got to stop this before you know you know it gets worse and it's just um and they capture that uh, you know pretty well even though it's a different justice league in the animated adaptation but they still capture that pretty well and you got batman like trying to do stuff against doomsday you're like what are you thinking dude <laughs> like you're what are you gonna do against doomsday um you know but uh but still i mean no, no, no shade on batman it's just uh you know, Batman sometimes needs prep time and uh, to defeat more powerful enemies. And he didn't have any with Doomsday. So he wasn't uh, he wasn't there a lot. He was in the uh, the funeral stuff some, but yeah, but anyway. All right. So great artists, great writers at this time. Um, Daniel Stern, Louis Simonson, a lot of great people that did this comic book. Uh, these four comic books that tied in and justice league which i think dan jurgens was doing double duty on uh he was doing superman and justice league for a while which art wise we were like god dang man you have a lot of artists these days that can't keep up that monthly schedule and these guys they didn't even they had to go and scan them and mail them to people to get them colored and inked and it was like a whole process and they still got books out weekly with superman and nowadays you're like well this book i understand that some artists need more time to paint or do things I get that, but everything's digital. You can instantly scan an image and send it to somebody, and yet sometimes there's still delays. And I know the reason why sometimes I'm just, you know, playing devil's advocate kind of, but hey, they, look at that one. We don't have this one from before. Another cover from Funeral for a Friend and another puzzle piece. So we'll put that aside. But it is, it is one of those funny things to think about, but there is a, a reason for a lot of that stuff, you know. I've worked in comic books in the last, you know, 10 years, and there is a lot of reasons for things to get delayed and, and not always on editors or writers or inkers or colorists. Like sometimes it's just, you know, sometimes you go to use a scanner and it doesn't work. <laughs> I've gone to, to like Kinko's before in LA. I used to go to this one um, that was not really near, near our apartment, but, but kind of, Oh, Hey, look, another Chrome card. Nice. A Memorial tribute. Ooh, look at the purple Cape and stuff. That's That's neat looking card three. All right. We'll put that aside then cool and i would i went there one time and i had to scan like i think like four pages i had to get scanned in um just to get the you know the colorist or someone to, you know was, you know working on on it and they were like oh it doesn't work and i was like oh crap so i went to like a different one a couple miles away and that one didn't work and i was like wow they're like yeah our scanners are down i'm like what the heck so <laughs> so luckily i went like the third one i went to was a charm and i was able to use their scanner and I got the four pages in there, but it was, I was like, man, yeah. So I know sometimes things like that happen too. Uh, but nah, you know, it's a, it's a tough business. And then also getting your pages drawn in time. And sometimes as a creative, you sit to write something and you can't get the words out or you're an artist and you sit to draw something and you can't get the image out. And you're just kind of like just throwing darts at a dartboard almost. You're putting stuff on the paper, but it's not, you're like, oh, this is not going to work. And so there's a lot of reasons why things can be delayed at times. And sometimes it's shipping problems and, you know, 
sometimes you get the book done on time, but the printer is behind. You know, there's all kinds of stuff can go wrong. All right, great shot of Maxima there. Awesome shot. I like her costume too. Uh, she's awesome. Hey, what's this? Whoa, look. A bloody S? F2. Oh, so yeah, F1, it makes the tombstone on the back, and it creates the bloody S image on the front. I don't know if we'll get both of those in this box. I think those are pretty rare. I don't know if you get two in a box. So that might be the only one we get, but it's still cool. I'm glad we got one. That is nice looking. Um, simple, you know, but kind of effective. And there's a like a chrome element to the to the S. Oh, hey, we did get a checklist. Our first one in this whole box. Look at that. So there's 90 cards, and then the nine funeral for a friend cards, and then the checklist. So that makes 100 in the deck. So I'm actually going to put that over with the special cards because that was so rare. We only got one in this whole box, one checklist. Iced. Uh, I feel like some dark humor was definitely used in naming some of these cards. Uh, for sure. Midair Collision. That's a great one. He gets thrown into the helicopter. Yeah, that's another good image there where he's like punching Doomsday in the back to keep him from hurting Lois and, and humans because Doomsday, he's just looking around, just seeing other people watching the fight and he's like, oh, I'll just go kill them, you know, real quick. And uh, he just has one mode, right? He's just like a designed to kill. And they did do a, a series where they kind of explain a little bit more backstory on Doomsday. And it's neat, but I, I kind of liked him as this this element that just showed up and was random. And they even did a great job in the animated movie, the first animated one, uh, which I didn't like too much. The first one that made the Kevin Smith's giant spider toy man reference thing. Like, uh, I didn't really like that one too much. But there was a great line in it from Lex Luthor where he's like, this just feels so random. Like, he just died so randomly. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what made it kind of scary and effective in my mind. Um, oh. Um, um, these cards, I, they, they hold up, man. They're still really good quality, real sturdy, real shiny looking. Like these are nice. Like I said, these came out like in 1992 or something. And, uh, and they still look awesome, <laughs> these cards. And the packs open really nice and easily. So I can't wait till we get into the other box too, the Return of Superman, because I love Steel. He's one of my favorite DC characters, like top 10 favorite. I really like that character. And it's because of my reaction to reading him in this and seeing that he's just trying to capture the heart of Superman and, and maybe the soul of Superman in some way. And I really dug that. I really dug that. Um, he was a guy that Superman saved once and got mixed up with the wrong crowd and decided he's going to change his life around and do something. And, and he built this suit of armor, which is like kind of Iron Man style. But I liked him. John Henry Irons is his name, too. Right on the nose, but hey, cool character. But that's the second Louise Simonson character that I love that's in my top ten. The other one she created was, uh, co-created was Apocalypse. And so I'm a big fan of that character, too. And I have an Apocalypse tattoo on my arm, and maybe, maybe, we might get a Steel Superman S tattoo at some point as well. But uh, all tattoos have to be discussed now. Because, you know, because <laughs> that's just how our thing... How things work in my life now. So here we go. Ice made encounter. That's cool. All right, we're running out of packs, so so I'm I'm gonna guess that we probably got a full base set in here. But I just uh insert wise, yeah, not a lot of inserts in this in this box. But that could be standard. That could be why a lot of people were buying multiple boxes of these when they first came out. Uh, because base set wise, you're probably gonna get almost, if not all the base cards in one, in one box. So, yeah, but we still are missing two of the funeral for our friends, or at least I didn't notice. I mean, who knows? I'll go back through these and maybe we can, you know, can complete the, the puzzle, but probably not. I think I opened one of these box before, like many years ago, like six or seven years ago. And I think the same thing. I think we, we got um, like three or four inserts and then puzzle piece wise. I think we, we didn't complete the puzzle. Because I think I have a binder somewhere with, with my other ones. Um, I'll just have to look for them. And that's assuming if I still have them. I, I, who knows? I might have given them to like an old roommate or something. I'm taking advantage of this time. We have uh, therapy later today. And I'm trying to get a lot done before we start switching. So, Because it's not my day at therapy. Uh, okay, okay. Um, 
final battleground. That's awesome. That's another great shot. Oh, there's four. So there's one of the puzzle pieces we were missing. Oh, with Hawkman. 90s Hawkman and Hawk Girl. That's cool. I like those outfits. All right, two packs left. If we can complete that puzzle, that would be amazing. I would love that. But we'll, we'll see. See what we get. Two packs left. So there's another C4, C3, C2. Ah, dang. Is it? Are we missing C2? No. We're missing C1. I was, uh, I was thinking we were on a roll there. I was like, oh my goodness. Four, three, two. Ah, man. All right. So we might be missing one of the puzzle pieces still. Last pack. Come on. Last pack magic. All right. Maxima. Cool shots. Cool shots. Yep. And nothing. Oh, well. Still, look at all the cards <laughs> we got. Look at that. That's what you get in a box. That's a lot of cards. Um, there was like nine cards per pack. Puzzle-wise, let's set this up. Um, so we got this one. You know what's funny is I think I think C1 is what we were missing the first time, too. But look, even Deathstroke's there. I think this was during a time where Deathstroke was... They were trying to redeem that character. Unfortunately, him and like Hal Jordan and a couple other characters, they, they had some really creepo moments in the comics and written by really weird comic writers <laughs> who thought it was okay to do that. And it, I don't know, just weird stuff. Um, and and although I like Marv Wolfman and, and, and some of the other guys... Oh, oh my goodness. Let me get this here. Um, still, there there were some creepy moments in those comics with those characters, but I, I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think I have this puzzle put in one of our binders, and I think I am missing this one also. <laughs> so uh, cool, we have got a duplicate box like seven years later, uh, it looks like. But yeah, so you can create that image where they're holding his his uh, you know his uh, casket, and and uh, it's it's pretty tragic looking. Um, I'll also look and see if I had the other one of this because I know I did get one of these before, I think. I just don't remember which one it was. We got a checklist and we got two chrome cards, which again, I don't know. I'll have to go through the binder and see. And that binder, is, if I still have it, is locked away in a, a bin in a closet somewhere and probably never got opened from moving from California to Florida. So I'll have to really dig for that one. But for now, though, I just wanted to show this off and just have some kind of card unboxing because they announced Upper Deck they're going to do trading cards for DC Comics now. And I'm very excited for that. And so we did the, you know, if you saw my YouTube short, we did get the digital e-pack of Superman and we got the blue variant, which was awesome that we got that. And we bought one pack and we're able to get a variant. So that's really cool. So I'm excited that DC is going to do a series of cards coming out, kind of like Marvel Annual, but they're going to do like DC Annual. So when those come out, I will buy them. But in the spirit of DC hype and stuff now, I'm going to open these, or which we did just did, but we're going to open these in our next video so make sure you come back stay subscribed if you want to check out and hear me talk about the return of superman and see what these cards look like and i can't wait to do that so thank you so much for watching this episode as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace